I just want to say that Michael's book, I've read his book, and I was in the fashion business for quite a long time, and I think that he really tries to treat quite fairly the nature of the dilemma that the, the people that are involved in the business have with it. Um, I realize there have been a few people that haven't been too happy with Michael's um, observations. And thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. Controversy is the name of the game. But it, it really does give an overall picture, a historical view of the nature of this world of glamour. And um, there are you know, many things to be said for it and many things to think about concerning it. And I hope all of you will take time to do some thinking about it. I was based in Paris for quite a long time. I spent uh, four years in Paris. First, I went to school in Paris. I was at the Sorbonne. Um, I studied the Cours de Civilisation Française. Well, you would travel. You would go from Paris, and you would go to Milan, or you would go to England, or you would go to, uh, I did trips to Beirut, to uh, Moscow, to Poland, uh, the Far East. These were for magazines? Uh, magazines, fashion shows, and some, some commercials as well. I mean, there were uh, always commercials attached. They would try to combine with the big trips. May I have one? Oh, please, Lay's potato chip? I'm not really a frog. If I can eat just one Lay's potato chip, I'll turn back into a handsome prince. See? Remember, just one. to take the nature of beauty and to have fun with it, but to also talk about it in a philosophical way. So I'm sort of interested in educational television that has to do with you know, telling ancient stories. Uh, conversely, I'm also interested in, in the future and scientific or um, sci-fi programming. You know, I like that because I believe it's the same mythology. It's telling of a story. And I think more than anything, I think stories are what keeps us going. Can you perhaps expand on that a little bit, how you, you see alchemy in, in the search for either the fountain of youth or the development of the soul or the development of turning lead into gold? You will be seeing an unusual accomplishment here at the Coral Castle. Hi, this is Mary Michelle, and we're here today. It's the summer solstice, June 21st in the year 2000. It's a new millennium. And we're at a place that was created here in Florida in the 20th century, which I find very extraordinary. It was created by a little man called Edward Leedscallon. He weighed 97 pounds, and this entire place, several tons of coral that he carved and made this beautiful rock garden, as he calls it, the Coral Castle. I think we should talk a little bit about the moon. You know, the moon is the thing which in the gravity of the Earth's sphere, and the moon affects very much our daily influences in our lives. Obviously, Mr. Leedscallon thought it was important because he has the three phases of the moon he's carved in coral here. It's really something. And when you think that the entire state of Florida is made out of coral, and coral at one time was a living creature, and that that living creature relied on the tides, then we're back to the idea of the moon. So I think that the moon figured very strongly, as did all of the planets in Mr. Leedscallon's garden. Mr. Leedscallon wrote several pamphlets as to how exactly he manipulated these massive tons, as this one that's behind me, this door that you push with one finger. 
Did he do it with magnetic currents? Some people have theorized perhaps solar energy. I really don't know how he possibly done it and defied the law's gravity. Francis has been kind enough to hold here at Live Five's date of birth, January the 30th. Good morning, you're on with Mary Michelle. Good morning, Francis. Good morning. I love your show. I just found out about your show. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to get on with you. I'd like to know about my health, and also, I'm thinking of buying a new car. Okay. You have the sun in Aquarius and the moon in Sagittarius. This is a harmonious angle. Uh, there might have been a few issues. Do you have a daughter? Yes. There might have been some issues with your daughter or women friends in your life in November that um, might have been a bit, you know, upsetting. Boy, you are a psychic. You don't need a psychic with you. This is Mary Michelle for WVIP. The 1934 movie, Call It Murder, with Humphrey Bogart and Sidney Fox, gives us some good dramatic moments. The story reminds me of Portia in The Merchant of Venice and her classic speech, The Quality of Mercy Be Not Strange. The opening scene as the camera pans over the faces of the jury and others in the courtroom is full of anticipation. You feel the dilemma of compassion versus justice. The opening line, you see, I loved him, sets the pace for this psychodrama concerning the issue of capital punishment versus the quality of mercy.